you have Crime as a Service. Absolutely. You can you can buy the service for free or for, for a cost, and that's it. Welcome to Architecture Corner. Today's guests are Joakim Lindbom and Jesper Kråkede. Hi. Uh, some weeks ago I was watching a, a TED talk uh, with Mark Goodman who was quite eye-opening, I would say, uh, realizing or he's showing us that, that the innovation happening within the cybercrime society is, is on a level where most people wouldn't even dream of. Uh, I've seen, I mean, my conclusion is that the, Part of the problem is that they can access uh, different kinds of technology without doing any kind of, of legal um, view on it, so to say. There are no blocking, they don't need a, any negotiations, they just use technology. Whereas society really needs to have a long, long, long period of time before we can apply that kind of technology. How do you see that? It, it, it's quite interesting. I quite often do talks about cyber security, cyber crime, and try to help my clients to understand what are the threats? What, who are actually trying to attack you? And quite often I get viewpoints that are dating back to the 90s or early 2000s that it's my competitors that probably would, would like to attack me or it is someone else or it's some uh, young hacker with pimples that would try to hack me. And sadly that's not the case. What we're looking at is cybercrime. We know that cybercrime is about 270 billion uh, dollars a year and that's it's a humongous amount of money and they're using that money to do different type of technology uh, technology changes and using technology in ways that we have never seen before. In quite advanced technology they're using the leading edge or even bleeding edge technology where a society and companies they are really expecting something much more simple, much, some, I mean basic technology and that's simply not true anymore. Uh, that's completely correct. And one other thing is that most of the crime syndicates are global. Uh, look, look at how our clients view uh, the criminals. It's more localized group, it's possibly one hacker in Russia or something. That's, but today we're looking at companies that develop, define the vulnerabilities. We have other companies that buy those vulnerabilities and create exploit code and then sells that to companies that create packages that other companies use to be able to hack. And, other, other, and furthermore, other companies are purchasing those services to be able to hack the competitors or hack to be able to uh, do some ransom or whatever. It's a complete full industry. They even have better CRM system than, than most companies has today. Yeah. So, so what they're talking about is that going from a situation where, where you actually needed skills to do hacking and do, do breakage, now you have crime as a service. Absolutely. You can you can buy the service for free or for for a cost, and that's it. Absolutely, yeah. and uh, it, it's quite interesting that things we regard as advanced attacks today, they are they are purchased in a box tomorrow. They mm. are, we have a modus operandi moving that was ex extremely efficient and really hard to manage about two weeks ago. That today we see automated in a different type of boxes. Yeah. And you're touching on something I've been actually using in speeches for some time when I talk about the zero day forever situation, mm -hmm. where you have this that there is an exploit and you more or less need to act in a situation that, that it is this zero day time. You have zero days to react. And I think that's the new reality. You can't have a security model or a security architecture or anything that foresees months and years of preparedness. But we're talking about days, hours, minutes, mm -hmm. in my view. Absolutely. Um... Today, today, look at how many build security. They build about the actual security. So they have a strong security surrounding. They possibly do a secure coding and everything. Still, they fail because they don't monitor the system. They don't monitor the networks. So if something happens, they don't know it. Today, it takes 263 days from your hacked until you realize you've been hacked. Just imagine a situation where someone walks into your house and eats your food, pets your dog, sits on your sofa, and you don't realize it for 263 days. <laughs> yeah, and after this time, most likely the, 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 the criminals are gone, for sure. They're not there anymore. So the, the ability to actually to, to detect them is one thing, but then to do, defeat them and to carry out what you need to do, that's way too late. That's way, way too late. Mm. But I think that it's not, not only about security. I mean, I think I'm working quite a lot with concepts like, like DevOps and so on. Mm. And, and really what you need to go for a situation is that you need as an organization to be able to react on these kind of threats. Mm. When there is a new threat in some kind, whatever, you need to be able to deploy the, 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 defeat, the, the defense and then you need to be able to, to test it out and to deploy it into production in 
close to zero time. Mm -hmm. And most of today's standards, most of today's procedures, they require days, weeks, months for, for doing this kind of procedure. You need to go through a very specified and very thorough process mm -hmm. to, to deploy and to, to, to verify that these, these changes are actually uh, doing what they're supposed to do, they're not creating a new threat and so on, then you can deploy it into production. So going from the traditional deployment cycle of weeks or months, you need to get out the deployment cycle for hours. Uh, look, look at that. One solution for doing this is to utilize security operation centers that, uh, that, of course, they monitor the networks, but they could also react them when they find a pattern that this is possibly a, a hack starting, a hack starting going on. And what they do then is block the attack and try to take measures and try to hinder that they move further into an organization, cutting down 263 days to hopefully a few hours. The attack will happen again until we patch the system, we deploy it, we run through the processes. But it's a way to start reacting rather than uh, to just see it happen. Mm -hmm. Is this something that is similar to credit card companies that block my card if I have an unusual pat buying pattern or it's used in other places where I'm doing my current transactions? Absolutely, it's more or less the same type of system. We're looking at big data management and understanding patterns and understanding, understanding for example, credit card information. We're looking at how do you travel over the world? Is it possible to do a purchase in uh, Stockholm and then a half a day later in Jamaica and then back to Stockholm again within six hours? And of course that's not possible. So they block the transaction or they manage it. But at the same time, it's the same thing uh, for a company. You, you need to look what's happening in your system and understand the patterns of information flowing within, uh, within your environment, no matter if it's a cloud environment or you, you're using only mobile phones or whatever. So, for example, if you see that there is a lot of download of information uh, that is not on a standard port from a company, then this is not the usual behavior we should do something, but if you publish a video that's going through the firewall, you can identify, okay, this is to this site, this is a normal behavior. Is it something like this? Something, something like this, absolutely, but a lot more advanced. You can also see weak signals identifying that, okay, we have this type of thing happening on this server, this type of thing happening on this network. There's something going on with this switch that's not typically normal. It could be normal traffic, but all three in conjunction shows that there's something not right going on, and you could blocking, you could start blocking that. But then there's the situation that you need to define what is a DDoS uh, attack versus what is actually only a high load, mm -hmm. because they have on one level the same patterns, the same characteristics here. But of course, there are things that you could differ, mm. for sure. But I think one, one thing is detecting the, the threats, so to say, and that's really important what, what you're saying. You need to have some kind of, of centralized and a very advanced way of de detecting those patterns. That's one thing. But in this case, I mean, talking about a, a, a bank system, for, for instance, or a transportation system or whatever, you can't simply just block the card, because what you need to do is actually to, to identify the threat, identify the weakness of the system. You need to uh, design and implement uh, something fixing that, that, that uh, threat, so to say. But then comes the hard part. Then you need to verify that this patch actually is doing what it's supposed to do. This new system in a new state actually is not breaking anything. You need to, to do some kind of regression testing on a whole system level. And this is typically something taking days, weeks, or months in big operations today. So what I'm saying here is that you, one thing is, of course, detecting, but you need to, to short-circuit the time from doing the detection until actually deployed functionality. You need to go down to hours. One way to look at that is to make sure that the changes you're doing or the threats you're managing do not affect that much data that uh, could be. For example, it's a lot better to only lose 10 credit cards or then lose uh, 100 million credit cards. The cost is quite low. And the, the, way to, the way to manage that is to make sure that when you start looking at information, does it has a value? Do I really need it? Most of the time you start protecting things that has no value for you, but there's a lot of value for someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. And I really, I think what we're talking about here is that they're trying to do some kinds of partitioning, that they're going from the, the maximization of the centralization that we're seeing today, that you do something very centralized, you need to distribute, you need to, to diverse your solutions in a way. But also, I think one thing is also technology diversion, that 
doing hard standardization on one vendor, one switch vendor, for, for instance, on, that's actually helping the attackers because once you have one single standard, it's much, much easier to break in. So I think we are going to see a situation where we're going from this hard standardization, centralization over to, to a more diverse and, and, and mixed up solutions. And that, of course, will have cost effect, it will have a skills effect, and it will have, have a lot of negative effect. But it might be the only way to actually to break the, 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 the possibility to, to hack these systems, I think. Or what do you say? Is that a, is that a way? Uh, it could be. What, what we're looking at is more uh, globalization, a lot more about using different cloud solutions for different type of uh, information objects. So instead of looking at when well, we need to have one, one vendor for all the switches in our network, let's lose the network. Let's start use, utilizing different type of cloud solutions where we manage this, a certain information object and integrate that with some other cloud solution and have a really good uh, identity and access system for for getting, getting access to the system. That way, that way we lose the problem with the zero day attacks that affects the whole, your whole system. Yeah, that's true, but in a way that's, also, that's actually doing standardization on an even higher level. Uh, because mm -hmm. if you go for Azure, it will be Microsoft technology. If you go for something else, it will be that technology. So that's, that's the weakness. But the point I think you're having here, is, which is really important, is that the scale of these organizations, I'm looking at as Azure, looking at uh, Amazon Web, Web Service, for instance, these organizations, they have a scale which is so much bigger than any single corporations on this planet, meaning that they, they can deploy security measures, they can deploy uh, means into making these solutions secure on a level which are not 10 times, not 100 times, but perhaps 1,000 times bigger than any single corporations ever could do. I think that's the point with it. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. That one thing is uh, that we really need to understand the, the threats that are going on today. These are not simple uh, hackers. These are actually crime syndicates which are attacking corporations around the world. That's one thing we really, really need to understand. But we also need to understand that during detection, uh, you need to do something very different today. And the, I would say, from my point of view, from the system engineering point of view, you need to really uh, increase the quality, increase the speed of, of your uh, time from doing detection over to deployment, meaning that concepts like DevOps are today really, really crucial to actually handle the situation. Thank you very much for your insights in this area about cybersecurity and hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.